Hello, hello. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here with you. Welcome and welcome back. If it is your first time joining us, what we do here is EFT or otherwise known as Emotional Freedom Techniques. Essentially, it's a very simple and easy body incorporated tool that you can use to release overwhelm and trauma. It can be current or it can be past. Uh, what we do here during this hour together is I don't go through an explanation of how to utilize it. Uh, we simply do it together. So if you're new to it, if you're not sure what it is, um, but you'd like to participate, you'll simply follow along with me and you'll catch on very quickly. It's very simple as far as its application. I will lead you in it. Uh, the way that it works for you to participate, should you want to, is to just follow along with me, but also you can put in the chat if you have anything that's on your mind that you would like to address. And then I do my absolute best to try and make it work for everybody. And I'll explain how you can uh, shift it to make it fit you as best you can as we go along. So I'm so glad that you're here. Hello, Mama Hutch. Hello, Sneha. I'm so glad that you're here. Hi, Shay. Hi, Maureen. So wonderful to have you here with me today. I'm in my my room. This is where I typically have sessions if someone's coming uh, to me in person. Uh, but I've got some repairs going on in my the main portion of my house. So <laughs> I, I get to be in my own room today. Um, I didn't have any uh, emails come in, so I don't have anything to address before we go to our chat today. So go ahead and drop in the chat, whatever it is. I know a few of you already have, and thank you for that. Um, oh, I'm so glad that you're here. I don't know how to pronounce your name. I'm probably going to say it wrong. Siobhan? Siobhan. <laughs> I don't know, but I'm so glad you're here. Please be patient with me and my complete inability to say names. <laughs> Maureen, glad to have you here. Talib, greetings. Hey, Jackie. Okay, well, let's go ahead and get grounded so we can jump into tapping. Get your body into a comfortable position. Tune into it real fast. See if you want to stretch, twist, whatever your body's asking for, for just a quick little adjustment. Once you get there, let's take a deep breath in and out. Really just letting your body deflate. We really want to give your whole body the signal that this is a time where we're going to relax. We'll sit up straight in a second. Okay, let's take another deep breath. And out. My neck wants to drop today. Okay, and while you're here, you have your eyes open or closed, but we're going to draw all of our awareness back into this present moment and into our bodies as much as it feels safe and, and happy to. If you don't quite get there, that's okay. Um, you're on the pathway and you just do it to the best of your ability right now. So as you're sitting here, I want you to focus on where your cheekbones are. And think about where the tip of your chin is. And where are the tops of your shoulders? How about your thumbs? Where are your thumbs? And the back of your knees. The very bottom of your spine. the bottoms of your feet. Let's take one more breath. And out. Okay, now I'm gonna set the, my intention to be, um, to have happen while I'm here with you for this hour. I'm gonna put my hands over my heart for that. You can join me if you want to. And my intention is that even though we are all over the world and we're all having different experiences that we're all gathered together for the same purpose right now. And in doing that, we've created a community, a community together where we have the same purpose and the same intention. And that in this community, <clears throat> in this time that we have together, 
that we all get to feel supported and we get to feel seen and heard. Even if you don't put anything in the chat, even if beyond the intention of your energy, uh, you're, you're anonymous. But even with just that, even with just being here, with being present, that we all get to receive these feelings and this confirmation that we matter and that we're wanted. Okay, so take a deep breath here. <sighs> okay. Now I'm going to check on the chat real fast and see what everyone has put in for us to start with. Okay, not feeling heard and confirmed, which Mama Hutch, I know that we've talked about this, um, this Friday, the video that I have is specifically for what you've been bringing up. So I hope that that's helpful for you. Hi, Laura, and Frank. Okay, recovering from triggers more quickly. Okay. I'm curious, Shay, why is it that you want to recover from triggers more quickly? Do you feel like it's, you're not safe in your trigger? Do you feel like it's getting in your way of your joy, of your um, joy, of your happiness? Um, what is your desire for recovering from triggers faster? Maria. Valeria. Okay. Mm, I'm worried about a friend. Getting in the way of creating content. Okay. All right. I love that you put getting in the way because I think that really captures what I'm seeing in the chat right now is um, wanting to release things, let go of things, see things a different way because things are getting in the way. Um, let's start with that. So when you hear getting in the way, what is it that pops into your head? It could be you see another person, that you see an issue, maybe a flaw, um, that you see a problem that isn't necessarily a flaw, but you don't have the knowledge or the resource to eradicate it. So when you think getting in the way, have a clear picture of whatever that is that is getting in your way. And it could be something... Um, that's like, well, there's no way to solve that. It's time. I need more time. And that doesn't exist. I can't suddenly make more time. Um, so whatever it is, go ahead and accept it and allow it. And that's what we'll tap on. Okay. I'll give you a second to get that in your mind. And then we're going to start tapping. There's an acupoint right here on the hand. You can tap with one finger. You can use all your fingers. You can use your palm, even your other hand. But that's our, our place we're going to start. even though as I focus on what I want, I see this thing in the way. I deeply and completely accept myself. Even if I immediately heard, no, I don't, I don't accept myself. <laughs> I'm doing my best to hold space to accept myself. Even though right now, as I think about what I really want and I feel like I can't have it because of this thing in my way, I choose to deeply and completely accept myself anyway. Even if it doesn't make sense right now, I accept myself anyway. And even though Right now, I don't see any way to get what I want because of this thing in my way. I still choose right now to deeply and completely accept myself anyway. What I want.
getting in the way. Get out of my way. It won't get out of my way. Even though this won't get out of my way, I'm open to finding a solution. What I want. What I believe I want. Struggling with what I want. Well, what could I mean by that? Why would I struggle with what I want? I wonder, are there things that I'm currently unaware of that might be supporting this block and keeping it in my way? Absolutely not. I am not willing to go there. I'm not willing to look at that. I am fighting so hard for what I want. I refuse to believe that there is any way that I am contributing to keeping myself stuck. That is inflammatory. That's angering. I resent the thought. I won't consider it. Even if right now it is very emotional for me to consider these questions that I'm asking, I allow myself to have my emotions. Even if it's really emotional for me to consider what I'm asking right now, I hold space that maybe it'll go somewhere other than what I'm thinking it's going to. In fact, I wonder if what it will lead to is the actual help that I'm looking for. The help that I'm looking for Help for what I want. Help to get this out of my way. What I need. What I want. Open to solutions. Open to insights. And, and allowing myself whatever emotions come up because my emotions don't hinder my receiving solutions. It's okay for me to feel triggered and receive my solution at the same time. So I wonder what could be contributing to this block in a way that I don't currently see In what ways could this block be receiving support even from myself? Is it supporting a limiting belief that I haven't completely gotten rid of? Maybe someone in my past told me it's not okay for me to be as successful 
as I believe I can be. Or maybe it's not okay for me to be so smart and so quick at what I love doing. And therefore, it's safer for me to struggle. Maybe I'm afraid that if I put boundaries up and ask for what I want from others, I'll be abandoned. Whatever limiting belief that might be in my way, I give myself permission to hear it and to realize it. And I may know it immediately. It may take me a little bit of time. But right now, this moment, I hold space for it. I create an area for me to pay attention to it. That it can talk to me, that it can breathe and communicate through my emotions. Limiting beliefs. These limiting beliefs in my way. These limiting beliefs validating this block. Permission. Permission to receive them. Permission for insight. Permission for understanding. And as I become aware of these limiting beliefs, possible they come with their own set of emotions and maybe I'll need to process some events memories and that's okay it's okay if this is a little complex and it's okay even if it's something that I don't really want to look at. Maybe there's something in my past that I honestly don't remember or I don't want to remember. What could I do then? And do I have to wait until I clear out all of these limiting beliefs that might be supporting this block that I already have that's so much work and that's so much time. I wonder, is there an easier way? Is there a quicker way so that I can continue towards my success as I release these things? Continued success. Forward movement. Even though I'm not perfect yet. Hmm. Well, what have other not perfect people done to move forward? when they had things that potentially were in their way. 
what are some things that I could apply to myself that would help me move forward? I wonder if I have expectations on myself where I'm telling myself, you can't move forward. Not until fill in the blank. I wonder, have I placed myself in such a small area of tunnel vision that it's become a detriment. Like maybe I believe I have to appear perfect. I have to appear flawless or a certain type of level of leadership or professionality. But why would I do that? Would it be to avoid criticism? Would it be because I'm afraid that people will say I'm being fake or I don't deserve to be there? What standard am I holding myself against and saying I can't learn and move forward at the same time? These standards my own standards. Standards that are good. It may be standards that could be adjusted. Standards that can offer support for where I currently am rather than where I feel like I have to be. Supportive standards. Rules of engagement for me that allow me to grow and move forward as I am right now. And whether that's as much movement as I want it to be, or if it's just a little bit of movement, I give myself permission to acknowledge every amount of forward movement I'm able to do. And I give myself permission to really take a look at my standards, how I'm operating, why I'm choosing those ways to operate, and to determine, does it support who I am right now so that I can get to the goal that I want? The goal that I want my beliefs my actions based on my beliefs permission for my own support And as I take time to answer these questions and formulate a different plan, 
I deeply and completely accept myself. Okay, take a breath. <sighs> okay, now that one was very broad. Um, but I, I hope what you got through that was a lot of awareness um, on potentially how you're being too hard on yourself, particularly if you've had instances um, where you're a sensitive person, you know, uh, how other people think or feel or act around you affects you, your own energy, your emotions. Um becoming hypercritical can feel like a way to control your environment, particularly if you have an awareness of this when you're younger and you don't have control over your environment. Um, but then continuing that into adulthood um, becomes a great hindrance because um, then we're not taking our really phenomenal problem solving skills and applying them inwards to ourselves and giving ourselves that support that's needed to actually move forward rather that we've got all these really intense standards um, that are pretty hard to meet. Even if inside you know you are an incredible human and you can reach those, um, they still deserve to have support in getting there. I hope that makes sense. And I hope that was helpful. Okay, I'm gonna see what you guys are saying. Okay, I'm seeing a lot about triggers. So I think we'll do a specific tap on that too. Unread emails and unsorted notes. Allow myself to receive, feel good receiving. That's a really good one. Hi, Jay. Oh, yay. I'm glad that was good for you some of you. <laughs> okay. So let's go on to um, be just a little bit more specific about actually being triggered. Okay. Um, so think about how you respond when you're triggered. Um, and if you respond in different ways, um, then think about what's the most inflammatory for you. You know, what's, what's the most uncontrollable, what's the biggest feeling, what's the most, um, what's the one that you uh, criticize yourself more, for, um, or that gets in the way of your life, of your relationships. So I'll give you a second to think of that. You don't have to think of specific instances, just what it is. I know for mine, it's, it's anger. I tend to feel angry. If someone scares me, I feel scared and angry, <laughs> you know? um, but it can be, um, fear. It could be victimization. It could be overwhelmed just in general of, well, I just, you know, I've, everything seems like it's on fire and I don't know why I react so big every time. And um, so whatever that sounds like, looks like for you. And we will start on the hand again. And um, let's go with the phrase, I don't want to be triggered. Okay. Let's start there. Even though I really don't want to be triggered. I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though I'm really struggling right now with the way that I'm triggered and how long it lasts or how big it feels, I still choose to deeply and completely accept myself. Even though right now I'm really seeing the flaws in the way that I trigger, I still choose to deeply and completely accept myself. triggered. Triggered in my body. Triggered in my mind. Triggered in my emotions.
triggered in my interactions. triggered in my goals. All of this trigger in my life. This flaw. Oh, this flaw of mine to be triggered. Ugh. I'm not supposed to be triggered. Good people don't get triggered like I do. Wizened people don't trigger like I do. Balanced people don't trigger like I do. Nice people, healed people. All of these descriptions that I would really like to be, but that I don't get to be when I'm triggered. Falling short. Not good enough. I'm not good enough when I'm triggered. Even though right now, I completely believe I'm not good enough when I'm triggered. I'm open to believing different. I'm open to feeling different about myself. But I can't feel different about that. Triggered is triggered and it's gross and it's ugly and I don't want it. And I then I want to let go of it and I, I don't even want to go through it. <sighs> I want to deny my trigger. I want to break up with my trigger. In fact, I am. Dear trigger, I'm breaking up with you. I'm done with who you are. You bring no joy into my life. You complicate everything. All of my friends say that you treat me terrible and they don't like when you're around either. And you get in the way of the quality of life that I want. I'm better off without you. So I'm breaking up with you. Also, you're fired. You're fired from my life. So leave immediately. Thank you kindly. I wonder, what would life be like if I was never triggered? If I never felt these emotions? Well, I could be happy all the time. I could feel good and my mind could be clear and I could make better choices. I could recall input faster. I could help others more effectively. I could show up for the people that I love better. I could hold space for them better. I wouldn't be so guarded. I wouldn't have things that I said that I regret. Man, life would just be so much better if I never got triggered. Even though right now I have really strong beliefs about how I feel about being triggered, I deeply and completely accept myself. I acknowledge and accept all of these things that I'm saying about being triggered. And I appreciate that I am having this conversation with myself right now. But I wonder, what would it feel like for the parts of me that have been through things 
if they could never be acknowledged. Well, triggering doesn't mean acknowledgement. Those are two different things. I wonder, what if I saw my triggers as an acknowledgement? What if I saw the way that I'm triggered as something inside of me saying, hey, I don't like that. That is touching a boundary that I don't appreciate being breached. I don't think that's appropriate. I don't think that's kind. I don't care for that. What if my trigger is helping me realize something is out of balance? Out of balance. Out of balance in my experience. Trigger. Warning flag. Okay, well, let's say that is what it is. What good is it doing me? Let's say I feel triggered because of something someone is saying right then. Now what? Well, maybe it's telling me so that I can make a choice so that I can choose to speak up. I can choose to walk away. I can choose to disengage. Okay, but I still don't like how it feels inside of me. What can I do about that? What can I do about how triggers feel to me? Oh, well, what do they currently feel like now? So take a moment and think about when you're triggered, where is it in your body? How intense is it? Does it burn? Does it constrict? Does it feel like ice? Does it go through your nervous system? Does it go through your muscles? Uh, does it just completely do everything? Does it make your bones rigid? Find a description for what your trigger feels like. For me, it feels like um, a bit of a shock wave. It has a sudden presence. It's not like a slow burning thing. It's like, poof, and then it's centered more in my chest and it feels like fire, like a billowing fire. Even if it's a small trigger, it's still like a small billow. <laughs> So as I consider what my trigger feels like, I wonder what way I would prefer to feel it. Can I adjust that? If this trigger is here to be helpful, then can I adjust it to feel different so that it feels better for me? Trigger. Feeling better, feeling different, feeling supportive, my trigger, my early warning system. Well, I wonder what I would like for it to feel like. So what would you like for it to feel like? And keeping in mind, it's a warning system. You may not be able to make it feel like a warm hug. Um, if you can, that's fantastic. Um, but maybe it's contained in a box. Or maybe it's something that as you connect with it and say, I don't need you to be so big. Like, I know you're there. Okay. And we're communicating. I'm acknowledging you. So 
how about you just like chill out a little bit? Just, just be smaller, whisper. So take a moment and think about what is a way that your trigger could show up in a way that's manageable for you. It doesn't feel overwhelming. As I consider ways that my triggering system can become more helpful and less overwhelming, I hold space that I'll find an answer. And even though I would really like to be at a place in my life where I just don't get triggered, I'm not there today. But I can today communicate with my trigger and maybe find a solution along the way. And as I continue to discover my solution to cooperate and coordinate with my triggers, I deeply and completely accept myself. Okay, take a deep breath in. <sighs> Sometimes it can help to write things out, to speak things out, to personify things like this. It can make it a little bit more simple. Um, so to project your trigger out in front of you as a person and while you're tapping, talk to them and, and be completely truthful because it's a part of you. It already knows exactly how you feel. <laughs> so you're like, you are trash. <laughs> I do not like that you're here. Um, it's fine to say those things, get those emotions out um, and then see it as more of a communication and see what comes up. Parts of you are very, very intelligent and it's it's possible that because of the way you feel about a part of yourself, you're not able to listen to what it can potentially communicate to you. Just like another person, if you're triggered and angry at them for something, it's a lot harder to listen to what they have to say. That's true for parts of you inside of your own body as well. Okay. And... Okay, being happy in the moment. Right, I see you with your heaviness about unread emails and notes and worrying about a friend, Lee. Hmm. So I would say not feeling empowered would be concerned about a friend, feeling heavy over um, things that need to get done that maybe feel too big to do. So empowerment, I think, would be a connective area there. Oh, Noemi, I see you, your tightness in the neck. Let's see, these are a little, little spread out, um, but I'm, I'm really feeling like the connection of empowerment, empowerment within this situation with what I'm feeling, with what I'm seeing, with what I'm experiencing. And um, acknowledgement and support. Let's go with that. Okay, and I see you, Karen, with the uh, wanting to use your voice. So empowerment and support for that empowerment. And whatever way that that's 
showing up for you. So um, consider where in your life you're not feeling as empowered as you would like to, whether it's, man, I really just, why can't I make myself do this? Um, I am making myself do this, but I just don't know how I'm ever going to catch up on it. Um, I have this desire and I have no idea how to contribute to it. Um, even though it's so meaningful to me, um, it's out of my hands. I don't know what to do. And then holding support to find or believing in support to find that movement. So, okay. I actually want to start here. You can follow me or you can tap on any of the spots that we tap on. You don't ever have to do the same one that I'm on. Even though right now I don't feel empowered about this thing in my life. And you can be specific. You don't have to say this thing. You can speak it out loud about these emails, about my friend who's sick, about speaking up at the doctors, even though I don't feel empowered to do this. I deeply and completely accept myself. Even if it's hard, even if I'm not sure how I accept myself, I still choose right now to make that choice to have this decision, I accept myself. And even though right now, as I think about this thing, I don't feel empowered. I still choose to deeply and completely accept myself. And even though right now, I don't know how to feel empowered in this situation. I still choose to deeply and completely accept myself. Empowerment. Empowerment in this thing. The outcome I really want. Not knowing how to get there. Even though right now I don't know how to get there. I deeply and completely accept myself. I accept that I'm trying. I accept that I'm looking. I accept that I want. And I am grateful to myself for these things, even if right now I don't have the solution yet. Empowerment. Empowerment for what I want. I wonder, what does empowerment mean? How, how does someone get empowered? How, how does that happen? What all does that include to become empowered? Maybe it includes knowledge, you know, insight, um, some type of instruction. Could be that. Um, support, maybe like emotional support, someone believing in you could be empowering. Uh, not feeling alone, maybe that. You 
maybe seeing a little bit of something working, you know, not having to go completely based off of trust or faith, but having some forward movement that feels encouraging. That's empowering. Empowerment. Empowerment for me. Well, this thing that I want feels really big. Even if it's not big to other people, that doesn't matter. It's big to me and it feels big right now. And so I give myself permission to speak the way it feels. It feels big. So maybe if I look at it in smaller pieces, that could be easier. Maybe that could feel more doable. So I wonder, what is it that I really want to happen? What is what is the outcome I'm looking for when I think about it being just, just 100% perfect? What does that look like? And why do I want that? And is there a way that I could accomplish that in pieces instead of all at once? Maybe even though what I want all at once is my friend to be healthy and to feel good. Maybe I can offer something to feel good for a moment, for five minutes or two seconds. Maybe I can send my friend a text or a picture or a meme or a YouTube video that I know is going to be a great distraction and bring some good emotions, some good feelings. And it's not a solution for forever and always, but it's a beginning. And I can take a beginning. That's one of the the things I listed that will help with empowerment is some progression. And I wonder if it's something having to do with myself, a task that I just so big and overwhelming and I know I need to do it all and all of it's just so big. How can I offer support to myself in a way that would feel good? What if I gave myself a line of success that's so ridiculously easy, it makes me laugh to think about that being my goal? But then I would get to feel good about it. So what could that be? If it's, I need to get the pile of laundry done that's all over the house, Maybe my first goal is just walking up and touching the nearest thing, not picking it up. That is not my goal. My goal is to touch it. (laughs) And I give myself permission to feel good about that. And if it's all of the emails that I haven't read that I'm supposed to reply to, Maybe it's just opening up my screen and looking at them and finding a way to not panic and to not feel heavy and to just go, well, hello, aren't you a big nasty mess that I have to deal with? What are you doing here today? I don't see any chocolate you've offered me to have to deal with everything you're bringing my way. 
maybe I don't have to take such a heavy judgment and it's okay to make it a little bit silly to alleviate some tension. So with feeling empowered is forward movement and support or knowledge. And I can really narrow that down into what that looks like so that it can be just microscopic in each of those. And I gave myself permission to feel good about every single step. I wonder how I would feel at the end of the day or at the end of the week, the end of the month, the end of the year. Even though I may want it to be done this second, that's not really giving myself a chance to accomplish it. And it's okay for me to have those feelings, but maybe it's also okay for me to not make that my expectation. Maybe my feelings and my expectations can be different. My expectations, empowerment, knowledge or awareness, empowerment, support in a way that guarantees success. Empowerment. Forward movement and acknowledging every bit of it. Empowerment. my emotions, my goals, my expectations, my outcomes, just like I have many different parts of my body. And all of these parts do make up me They're all very different and they're not all involved in everything. So maybe that can be true in this as well. Maybe I can have big emotions about things and I can have big expectations they don't get to speak up and be a part of the goal that I'm setting for today. Support. My success. My empowerment. And as I continue to allow myself to focus in on how I can achieve what I want, I give myself permission to celebrate that, to trust that, and to lean into that. 
as I deeply and completely accept myself. Okay, breathe in. <sighs> How are you feeling? Take a moment and think about the difference that I hope you're feeling from the beginning of this hour to where you are now. And the, the goals that we set where you get to feel heard, where you get to know that you matter, where you get to have insights, where you get to feel more calm, more peaceful, and know that you are part of a community. As you focus in on that in your body, if you're feeling those things, allow yourself a moment of gratitude and appreciation. Thank you so much for being here with me today. I truly adore each of you. And uh, if you have any questions, um, feel free to email me. If there's ever something that you want to address that you don't feel comfortable writing in the chat with your name attached to it, email me. I will keep you anonymous, um, but, but we can still address it the following time. Just give me about 24 hours. So if you send it right before, I probably won't see it that week to be able to tap on it. And my email is just Amanda at EFTUniverse.com. I will put it in the chat. I can do it while talking and sometimes I can't, <laughs> but there it is for you. Um, I'm here for you. I'm so grateful to be a support. I will be thinking about you and I hope to see you next week. Have a wonderful week. Mwah. See you later. <laughs>